my producer. Can you give me a moment? We're continuing for our YouTube audience. That's tough stuff. <laughs> uh, I'm now talking to my brethren. And I just had to go a solid hour talking to my charismatic holiness friends. <sighs> friends and neighbors. And now I have to take a moment to talk with my brethren about what we talked about Thursday night, and I have to give you a whole new layer to that discussion. The other night, Thursday night, when we discussed Freed Hardeman lectureship and their fellowship problems, particularly Phil Sanders on that broadcast, I'm talking tonight and I'm asking this question, who is looking out for your best interest? Because I'm saying a lot of your elders, can you see that as an older man asleep on a park bench? Romans 13, 11, Paul had to write to New Testament Christians. He said, look, a lot of y'all are asleep. <laughs> and that knowing the time, that now is high time to awake out of sleep. And I'm saying elders are asleep. Preachers are asleep. Parents are asleep. Camp directors are asleep. VBS people are asleep. We got a bunch of folk who have not been paying attention for a very long time. And it is time for y'all to wake up. Now, can I go over here? You know, fellowship is obviously a New Testament doctrine. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Now, I have no problem. You want to talk to me. You say, well, I want to talk about who that constitutes. That's fine. But I'm saying at some point, we are going to have to say to someone else, I, in good conscience, cannot continue to fellowship with you. 2 Thessalonians 3, 6. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after tradition which he received of us. You hear I said that a moment ago, in good conscience, I just cannot continue. That doesn't mean I hate you. In fact, it's the opposite. It means that I love you and I'm wanting better. I wish that fellowship was restored. But at the moment, I'm having to pull my portion of the fellowship away. Why? Because you're walking disorderly. You're not walking according to the New Testament standard. We all have to do it in various places or not. But right now what's happening is, is preachers, brotherhood politicians, members of Bible faculty of particular colleges, right now Fried Hardman, they are just not practicing it. This is in your Bible, Romans 16, 17. Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned. Right now, what y'all are acting like, some of my brethren are acting like uh, that our own brethren are infallible. You, your mind is just blown at this idea that there could possibly be someone on, quote, our lectureships that really should not be there. And you're acting as if the other men who are there just by their simple appearance, oh, if they're over there, hey, everything is good and sound. That. No, don't, don't even do me that way. If you see me in something, you say, look, I gotta talk to you about it. I'm not gonna bite your head off. I might end up telling you I disagree and we can talk about it. But right now I got brethren who are acting like I can't even raise the question. Are there people on the lectureships, teachers on the lectureships right now, Fried Hartman, that should not be there? 2 Timothy 4.2, all of the schools teach 2 Timothy 4.2. Preach the word. Really, what they're saying at lectureships is they, they get a topic and they preach that word. They go into a lectureship and they say, I got off the plane, I taught my topic, I got back on the plane. These folk who are on the lectureships really don't want to claim too much fellowship with the other people who are there. So when I bring out the fellowship questions and everybody gets on edge, y'all aren't even too eager to claim each other for fellowship. You start saying the stuff about just because I'm there doesn't mean I endorse. Are, are you saying you actually don't? There's some things in there that you think are problematic and ought to be corrected, and you say, oh yeah, well sure, then why aren't you correcting them? Mark, avoid, reprove, rebuke, exhort. Look, I'm all for exhortation. Challenge them and encourage them, motivate them to do better. Reproving and rebuking doesn't have to just be hard and skinning. And again, it doesn't mean that I hate you. I know a lot of these people, and my dad knows them, and he spent, obviously he's older than me, he spent more time with these people. Love you, that's not the issue. So before we start getting into it, can I just do a run-through really quickly? 
Email me and I'll get you a PDF of Curtis Cates' Comprehensive Study on Unity. What did you say Matthew 18, 15 teaches? Wayne Coates, I'll give you a PDF on that. I think I can, I think it's scanned in. If you would like to read Alan Heyer's discussion, how do you spell fellowship, big F, little F fellowship? Essentially, this is a self-rebuke these days to Freed Hardeman College, but you can check that out. And then Global Musics, a crucial study of a critical subject, fellowship. I can email you a PDF of that. And then also, 1992 Collierville Lectures, What a Fellowship, where B.J. Clark writes in this book exactly what I'm going to say to you tonight. But here's what I have to do. Look, like I said, I don't hate these people. This is Milton Sewell, former president of Freed Hardeman College. Then he becomes emeritus, chancellor. You see that? That's me giving, that's me giving Milton Sewell a thumbs up. And I'm about to play you an audio clip of why, at this moment, I, and this is my thing, someone says, well, Caleb, you're opposing the lectureship. How can you give him a thumbs up? Look, when I see good things, I say that it's good. And Milton Sewell's participation in this conversation is a good moment. Let me find it. Give a listen. My dad spoke with Milton Sewell, and I give another thumbs up to Milton Sewell. Milton Sewell had open conversation with my dad. I think he even had some pretty open conversation with my brother when Micah was at the Freed Hardeman campus. And I'm saying, honestly, y'all, thumbs up to Milton Sewell for having this good-hearted, open conversation with my dad. Because right now there are a lot of Christians, my brethren, who will not even like entertain conversation with a brother in Christ. And you can't say that I'm hard, I'm parroting. Really, I'm not parroting. But in this book, 1992, B.J. Clark says the same thing I'm saying. So what you mad at me for? If you want to shoot the messenger, I guess here I am. But I'm giving a thumbs up to Milton Sewell. Give a listen to what he says to my dad about a teacher named Jerry Rushford. But last year about but last year about using Jerry Rushford on the uh, Oklahoma Christian Lectures, and he, I would say his comments were just about the same as you just made about yourself and Royce Money. And, uh, but, you know, it's, it is causing quite a stir that Jerry Rushford is now, uh, you know, being included in the, in the name list. That would be too far for you, would it not? I mean, director, 32-year director of Pepperdine? Sure, 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 sure. I, I never allowed Jerry to come when I was president here. I don't want that quoted, but uh, I, I, that's, but I just, uh, he, he really wanted to come and present here, but I would not allow it. I, it was, he was just too far off the grid for us. So, uh, he, here, I don't, sure, sure. sure. I, I never allowed Jerry to come when I was president here. I don't want that quoted, but uh, I, I, that's, but I just, uh, he, he really wanted to come and present here, but I would not allow it. I, it was he was just too far off the grid for us. That was Milton Sewell telling my dad. He knows Jerry Rushford. He's friends with Jerry Rushford, and he said, and Jerry Rushford really wanted to come and present at Freed Hardeman College. He said, but I never allowed that. And I say, good for Milton Sewell on having principles and sticking to his guns. But now I have to ask you this question. The former president of Freed Hardeman College is now saying there are some people, though they would be Christians, he said, we are not going to then invite them to present information during the lectureship. Now, really quickly again, notice what he says about Jerry Rushford. But I just but I just come when I was president I here. I don't want that quote, but uh, I, I that's but I just uh, he he really wanted to come and present here, but I would not allow it. I, it was he was just too far off the grid for us. I would not allow it. I, it was he was just too far off the grid for us. I would not allow it. I, it, was, it was just too far off the grid for us. Something at the end, but what does Milton Sewell say? 
Jerry really wanted to come and present, but I would never allow it. He was just too far off the reservation, too far off the I don't end, too far off the end for us. But somehow, Milton Sewell, former president of Freed Hardeman College, he says, Jerry Rushford really wanted to come and present, but I never allowed it because he's too far off. You say, who is Jerry Rushford? The Rushford years. The Rushford years, 1983 to 2012, celebrating 30 years of spiritual feasts, Pepperdine Bible lectures. That's who Jerry Rushford is. For the past 30 years, Jerry Rushford was in charge of the Pepperdine Lectures. And so Milton Sewell said, Jerry Rushford, who for the past 30 years has been the leader, head of the Pepperdine Lectures, he said he wanted to come and present at Fried Hardin, but I never allowed that. And he said, Jerry is just too far off the end for us. Now let me make a moment, have a moment here with you, okay? <sighs> there are some people in our YouTube comments, and they don't know who we are. You've heard me before say, I don't, you know, I don't tell anybody I'm Church of Christ. I'm a Christian, and I'm a member of the Church of Christ. I'm a child of God. But there are some of these really, really traditional only. I'm saying the only way that they found the church was by their tradition. And you know, when I say you don't know really what we're trying to do, I, I'm trying to be consistent as much as I possibly can. And I love folk. You know, uh, I have read Bill Love's book, and I have listened to sermons by Bill Love, and what he calls them are congenital Church of Christers, these tradition-only folk. And so right now, some of these, quote, tradition-only folk are you know, giving me a hard time. What I'm calling for is just consistency. I, I think it's ridiculous for my brethren to condemn such a broad spectrum of folk and then turn around and be so inconsistent. When I, like I said, when I see good things, I can call it a good thing. Milton Sewell had some principle about who's coming in. He said, Jerry wanted to come in, but I never allowed it. He's too far off the end. I said, thumbs up to uh, Milton Sewell on that, being a principled individual. Good. Hey, Look, Pepperdine, as I'm about to show, is not a conservative scene, not a scriptural scene. Let me say it that way, not a scriptural scene as far as their worship goes. But years ago, Jerry Rushford, he wrote this. This is his master's thesis, The Apollos of the West, The Life of John Allen Gano. And I just, I got to take a minute with you because I'm saying I don't want you to see me as this legalist, hotshot, whatever. I'm just trying to be consistent. And I'm about to say, I've actually read his master's thesis. Have you? Like all these folk out here taking up for Jerry Rushford. I've read his thesis. He wrote his doctoral dissertation on James A. Garfield. I have read that also. And his book, Christians on the Oregon Trail. Look, man, I'm saying I read all kinds of stuff. I had Restoration Review and Mission. I got this for Christmas. This is what I get for Christmas, man. Encyclopedia of the Stone Campbell Movement, Doug Foster. So I understand where people are coming from. I just find a problem with where they're coming from when I start aligning it with the New Testament text. And when you get down to it, so did Milton Sewell. Milton Sewell said Jerry Rushford is just too far off the end for us. That's a historical document, and that's why people love Jerry Rushford is because he's a historian. But when it comes to his practices, Milton Sewell says, well, he can't come to Freed Hardeman. Milton Sewell said, Pepperdine cannot come to Freed Hardeman. Jerry Rushford, according to Milton Sewell, cannot come to Freed Hardeman. Then my question is, if Jerry Rushford cannot come to Freed Hardeman, then how does Bruce McClarty get to come to Freed Hardeman? Bruce McClarty was a Pepperdine speaker, and when you check their schedule by virtue of alphabetical order, Bruce McClarty is listed right next to Don McLaughlin at the Pepperdine Lectures. Did Bruce McClarty reprove Don McLaughlin while he was at the Pepperdine Lectures? You, honestly, when I have to ask this question, how is it the case I continuously ask did Bruce McClarty reprove Don McLaughlin while he was on the Pepperdine lectures together? 
and somebody come out of the woodwork with an audio tape from his sermon where they say, Caleb, Bruce McLarty was at Pepperdine and he rebuked and he reproved and he exhorted them to repentance. Never. Now, you say, who is Don McLaughlin? Because there's some of y'all that don't know who Pepperdine, what Pepperdine is, and I'm saying, you don't read anything, okay? You're not paying attention. You are Romans 13, 11. You are asleep. Who is Don McLaughlin? I got another series of papers here with me tonight. This is blue. A lot of the old firm foundations have blue hardback. This is not a firm foundation. This is the Living Oracles. This is Malcolm Hill's paper. And tonight I'm quoting from 1999. Look at what it says. Look what Malcolm Hill wrote. Tennessee Bible College. Who in their right mind would think that N.B. Hardeman would invite or permit a man like Don McLaughlin to freed Hardeman to speak to the young people? McLaughlin is one of the most liberal men in the brotherhood and preaches for one of the most liberal churches of Christ in the brotherhood, the North Atlanta Church of Christ. When y'all start talking to me, you say, Caleb, I don't know who any of these people are. Your ignorance does not prove anything. That is the former president of Harding University. That is Don McLaughlin the preacher for North Atlanta Church of Christ. Instrumental music, big time, they don't hide it. His daughter's name is Amy McLaughlin. She is a woman preacher who has preached at Pepperdine Lectureship. She has been on the Bible faculty at Abilene College. You got to wake up. What? Caleb, why is it so important that we know this? Because your 18-year-olds are going in the colleges. You think this is just about like lectureship time every February? It's your teenagers going in and being taught. And really, y'all, 1906 is upon us. And you say, what's 1906? The split between the Church of Christ and the Christian Church. And you know what the Christian Church is going to do? In another 50 to 60 years after they do that, they're going to split all over again into the disciples of Christ. Now, this quote is from Tennessee Bible College paper, Living Oracles. That's Malcolm Hill. And you know what? One of the articles that I'm going to quote is from Cary Duke. And like I said, when I see good things, I can give a thumbs up. Cary Duke wrote the book, Church, State, and Disease. He wrote that in the last two years when all these folk totally shut down the Lord's church. And he said, you do not have a right to do that. And also back in 2018, I give a thumbs up when I see it. Carrie Duke was one of the few individuals who actually spoke out against all the nude art that was going on, nude art, at Freed Hardeman that wants to be called a Christian college. Now, this is point number one. Who has your best interest in mind? Milton Sewell had his principles, and he said Jerry Rushford wanted to come, but I will not allow Pepperdine to come to Freed Hardeman. Well, Pepperdine has arrived to Freed Hardeman in the personage of Bruce McClarty. Did he reprove Don McLaughlin? As, what's his name, Malcolm Hill said, the, one of the most liberal congregations in the Brotherhood. Bruce McClarty, he's speaking on this year's Freed Hardeman lectures. Here's the next one. No, let me do this. Let me go over here. You say, just on your say-so, there he is, right there. FreedHardeman.edu lectureship slash schedule Bruce McLaurin. Right there. Now, my statement is, ask Bruce McLaurin, would he go speak on Pepperdine again? As I have said before, I'm fine if anybody says I don't know all the inner workings of Harding University. I said that he got fired at Harding because enrollment was down during COVID. They got to blame somebody. And then David Shannon picked him up. And what's his job now? He went from being college president at Harding. Now he's just minister in residence. Talk about an inflated title. Bruce McLarty, Pepperdine speaker with Don McLaughlin. Now, here's our next one. Let's look up fhu.edu, Whitlock. Noel Whitlock, right there. See him? Where's he going to be? Lloyd Auditorium, 2.30, whatever day. But you see him right there on the lectureship schedule. Well, here he is 
Milton Sewell down here said Jerry Rushford wanted to come present at Freed Hardman. He said, I wouldn't let him. Wouldn't let him come out. Well, Noel Whitlock is a Pepperdine speaker. And again, by virtue of his alphabetical name, Whitlock is pictured right beside Jeff Walling as a Pepperdine speaker. Did Noel Whitlock reprove Jeff Walling while at Pepperdine, 2 Timothy 4.2? Preach the word, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering and doctrine. Did he do it? You say, who is Jeff Walling? Again, if you would read some of these books, what a fellowship. 1992, call your bill lectures. They teach it, they're not practicing it anymore. Global music, critical study, crucial study of a critical subject fellowship. What did you say about Matthew 18, 15? Look, go on YouTube. If I play the audio, they're going to flag my video for copyright stuff, and I'm not going to have this video taken down. You say, Caleb, who is Jeff Walling? Jeff Walling is the head of Winterfest. Go on YouTube and type in Worship at Winterfest, UVW Worship Team, Singing in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. These are your college students. They go in with Jeff Walling to Winterfest, and they are now introduced to instrumental music. And all of y'all quote Ephesians 5.19, and Colossians 3.16, and Romans 15.8 and 9, and then you send the 18-year-olds, and now someone might say, okay, the 18-year-olds can do whatever they want. You're right, the 18-year-olds can do whatever they want, I'm talking to their parents who are under this illusion that somehow Freed Hardeman is standing up for anything today. And it's not just Freed Hardeman, it's Memphis School of Preaching, it's East Tennessee School of Preaching, it's the Texas School of Preaching. I can't get anybody right now to make a public statement on any of this stuff. Right now i got all these brethren saying, why well, I don't know who Jeff Walling is, why well, I don't know what Winterfest is. I don't know why Jason Rollo can't educate you on what Jeff Wall who Jeff Walling is and what Winterfest is. B.J. Clark has been around long enough that he absolutely knows what this is, and I can't get anybody to say anything, which is why I have to go all the way back to 1999 with Malcolm Hill. Living Oracles. This is now the quotation from Kerry Duke. Who is Jeff Walling at Pepperdine? Dudley Chancy, Associate Professor of Ministry at Oklahoma Christian, was one of the original designers of the notoriously liberal Winterfest program, which sows disrespect, disrespect for the Bible into the hearts of hundreds of young people every year in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. Lynn McMillan, another faculty member, participated in the 1999 Pepperdine lectures with such radicals as Rubel Shelley, Jeff Walling, Mike Cope, Edward Fudge, and Joe Beam. And you say, well, I don't know who Joe Beam is. Joe Beam says that the Holy Spirit helps him get parking spots. And Joe Beam will come into your house and do a marriage therapy with you and your wife. And if either one of y'all starts lying, he says that the Holy Ghost will tell him who is lying in the room. You don't know who these people are. Start reading your books. And you know what? They're fine. They're fine for you to not know who they are. And they're fine to get to come into the Freed Hardeman lectures and just, oh, they're, they're playing the long game and you guys are asleep. Romans 13, they're fine to hang out and take as long as it takes to do their thing, which is what it said, sow their seeds. They're turning it into the Christian church, disciples of Christ. And I'm using those as those folk would admit, sectarian labels. Did, Don McLaugh or did Bruce McClarty reprove Don McLaughlin? You saw the note. Did Noel Whitlock reprove? Jeff Walling, if Jerry Rushford can't come to Freed Hardeman, how are these Pepperdine speakers coming to Freed Hardeman? Now, here's our third one. David Skidmore. Let's go over to the FHU EDU. David. David Skidmore. Mid-South Youth Camp. Whatever day at 1 p.m. <sighs> Y'all, let, let me go back. Some of y'all are going to look at this and you're going to say, that, Caleb, that was so long ago. That was so long, years ago. 
Caleb, no wet, uh, Whitlock and Jeff Wallen. That was so long ago, years ago. David Skidmore was on Winterfest in 2022. 2022 Winterfest. David Skidmore. Taylor Walling. Jeff Walling. He's not rebuking these people, reproving these people, or exhorting towards repentance. That video, that's what he's with. You Google it. Worship at Winterfest UVW worship team singing in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. You have three, you have two Pepperdine speakers and one Winterfest speaker who was there last year. And what are y'all doing about it? Hey, Milton Sewell said, down there, Milton Sewell said, I'm not letting Pepperdine come to Freed Harden. Well, David Shannon is, is big time bringing Pepperdine and bringing Winterfest into Freed Harden. Can I make another note about this? You say, Caleb, boy, you are, you are out of your mind. I don't know. I'm, everybody in this book agrees with what I'm doing. B.J. Clark is in this book. Billy Bland is in this book. These folk all agree with what I'm doing. Phil Sanders agrees with what I'm doing. David Jones agrees with what I'm doing because they wrote the book. Gary McDade, John Shannon, Barry Gilreath, Mike Hickson, all these folk in this book. Global Music is dead. Curtis Cates is dead. Dan Cates is alive. Dan Cates ought to at least say amen to his dad's red book. Can I get that much? In 1999, the staff and faculty over at the Tennessee Bible College, they literally, they literally put every school in their paper. Pepperdine, Ohio Valley College, dead. Faulkner, Freed, Oklahoma OCU, Lubbock, IBC, Harding University and Southwestern Christian College, really all you'd have to do. Steve Flatt, who was at Lipscomb in Nashville. Rochester up in, I think Rochester's in Michigan. Abilene, they got all of them. You get this one book, 1999 Living Oracles. It's just something else, it's history, and history repeats itself, and history is repeating itself right now. Can I get an amen? Hello? Hey, do I love Milton Sewell? Like I said, he, I, he had some principle. I gave him a thumb up on that moment of principle. Jerry Rushford, look, when it comes to history, I love Jerry Rushford history. John Allen Gano, James Garfield, Christians on the Oregon Trail. He did a phenomenal job on John Allen Gano. I have said I got no ill will for B.J. Clark. I'm doing just fine, right? Nothing against him. I pray for his son's health, his wife's health, his health. Got nothing against Jason Rollo or Mr. Dendy. I have never met Mr. Dendy in my life. But I'm saying right now that as I expose Pepperdine coming into Freed Hardeman and they go to what's called standing in the gap lectures, I'm saying more like playing around in the corner. Y'all are over there talking about Karl Marx, Nietzsche, John Mader Keynes, <laughs> dead people, inundated with politics. Hey, I don't like Marxism, but this is happening in the backyard. B.J. Clark is going to be on the Freed Hardeman Lectures, and this is the new Texas School of Preaching. What do they say? Meet, meet the new boss, same as the old boss. These guys are falling right in line with the typical politics of preaching schools. Get accredited so that you can send credits over to the college and we all get in bed together. They need to talk to B.J. Clark about his own writing from the 1992. Look, call him on the phone. B.J., you are sharing the pulpit with two Pepperdine speakers and a Winterfest speaker. Director of the Memphis School of Preaching, Curtis Cates was the director before him. Curtis Cates rolling in his grave. Where's Dan Cates? Right? Dan Cates, Wayne Jones, they're related. David Jones is in this book. I can't get a peep out of anybody unless they're peeping against me because they don't like me. 
Hey, I don't need you to like me. What I need to do is have a good conscience and try to help you with the young people. They need to talk to B.J. Clark about how he is not, is he going to say anything to Phil Sanders? Bruce McLarty, David Shannon, David Skidmore, Noel Whitlock, Dale Maynard. Didn't even put Dale Maynard on this one. And this is Keith Mosier at the Playing in the Corner lectureship, Nesbitt. Keith Mosier taught my dad. Keith Mosier taught John Shannon. Keith Mosier taught my brother. Keith Mosier taught me. Keith Mosier is elderly. Keith Mosier has always had the same reputation of being very, very aggressive. Listen to how he started out his lecture at what they call Standing in the Gap. I have to tell you that I am absolutely shocked that there are this many people here this evening who want to study about a dead heretic. <laughs> this, is, this is a... That is partyism. What I don't know what you would call him. Put, And I'm not being disrespectful, but I'm saying put the old figure up there. Let him say something tough, and then the room does forced laughter. I can't believe that so many people are here to see, to hear about a dead heretic. And I'm saying at this point, the only way you're going to get these people to say something publicly is the person has to be dead first. You have Bruce McClarty, Dale Maynard, Noel Whitlock, and David Skidmore in your Freed Hardman backyard. What are y'all saying about it? And what I said the other night about Freed Hardman in 1984 going after Rubel Shelley, here's 1992. Where Keith Mo this is that book that the Memphis Library didn't want to share with me, and I got it. This is 1992 Harding University uh, Preachers Forum, where they were going to discuss Romans uh, 4 and James 2. And back in 1992, Keith Moser was really going after Rubel Shelley. But now, it's not fashionable to do that. Why not? Because over the years, the preaching schools, Memphis, preaching, Memphis School of Preaching in particular, has gotten extremely close to all of the Bible colleges. Do your two years at Memphis School of Preaching, transfer out to really, you go to campus, like I have been a student on Memphis School of Preaching campus, and they'll talk trash about Freed Hardeman. When my brother was a year ahead of me, he called Freed Hardman a bunch of liberals to my brother. Micah went over to the Freed Hardman lectures, and Keith asked him about which lecture did he hear. Micah called him liberals, and then Keith called him a bunch of liberals. It's a business deal. It, like I said last week, or Thursday, it's not about righteousness at this point. It's about getting in the room with your friends, putting the old figure up, let him make a tough joke, and force laughter. It's about keeping the school in tight with Freed Hardman, why? So that the gravy train flows for everybody. <laughs> you know, silly old me, I'm still over here operating on principles. What did we start out with? Who's got your best interest in mind? Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? I'm obviously using Romans 16, 18. I'm using 2 Timothy 4, 2, and I'm using Galatians 4. And I'm using everybody's writing against basically their older selves. They've all gotten older, and now they're just steeped in politics more than anything else. I don't hate any of these guys, and I don't want to be disrespectful to any of these people, but the evidence is out here. And I said it like I said it last week. I'm talking about the freshman class. I want them to get good, honest material rather than the politics, which is what they're getting right now. I love you. <laughs> Y'all are going to have to figure out what you're going to do with all this information. Don't just get mad at me. What are you going to do about it? Y'all all get on the phone together and talk trash about me, and you talk trash about my dad, and if you find out anybody's a friend of mine, you call them up and say, how could you be a friend with Caleb Robinson? Well, I don't know if they're going to own me at that point. But instead of doing that, why don't you contact David Shannon? 
and ask him, why have you allowed two Pepperdine speakers and a Winterfest speaker to come on when Milton Sewell wouldn't have done that? Ask B.J. Clark, why, are you going to say anything to Phil Sanders? Are you going to say anything to David Skidmore, David Shannon, any of these men that, was, that were listening on What Does the Bible Say? Can you do that? Can you make a phone call? Can you send an email? Can you write a letter? I tell you, you could do that, but I know people who are getting in contact with me and they're telling me, Caleb, we're pulling our funding because the evidence is out there. We're not done. The lectures are about to get started and we're just getting started. Next time, the discussion is going to be, it's bad for business. Church discipline is bad for their political business. Sticking with their own former writings is bad for business. Next time, we're going to talk about Steve Higginbotham. Steve Higginbotham actually agrees with me, just like B.J. Clark does, just like Phil Sanders does, but he's just not practicing what he actually teaches. And then next time, we're going to see the business, big time, the business with Dr. Kirk Brothers from Heritage Bible College down in Alabama. I love you. We're out of time. We're beyond our time. And I'll put my email back up there. If you want to get in contact with me, that's fine. 276-806-3641. Caleb G. Robertson at gmail.com. I love you. I love the freshman class. I love all these people that we're talking about. And I just hope you can appreciate an honest take in the evidence set before you. Have a good night. God bless you. Keep asking, what does the Bible say?